What is up guys, my name is Athelnair and today I'll be sharing with you the best way to record gameplay on your PC. So as you can see I'm using the software called DXTory. So what the software basically is, it's um, a better alternative in my opinion to other famous programs like Fraps or RealClause and uh, you probably would have come across it if you've seen other famous YouTubers um, using this to record their own gameplay. So first off, links to download the software will be in the description. Uh, it's basically this site and I'm guessing you can navigate your way through to getting this software. You do have a trial, although you would need to buy the actual program to um, to extend the trial or to further use the program for, for an additional year or so. So once you've got that, um, then you pretty much are set to go and you don't need to spend any more extra money. So this is the first tab, it's called Target. So there's nothing to do here. You basically don't have to touch anything here. And uh, we'll jump onto the tab 2. So this is basically everything's personal preference. You'd have your uh, frame rates written at the top. So in game, you'd have uh, on top left, so yeah, top left corner of your screen, you'd have the frame rates here. And depending on whether you're recording or not, the, the color of the frame rates, the number will change as listed here. So that's pretty much personal preference, as I mentioned and you can change it to whatever you like, it wouldn't make much difference to the performance. Now the folder tab, so this is the first real adjustment you couldn't be having to make. And before you go and record some gameplay, you might need to, well you definitely do need to add a folder, so click add folder, and you can choose the um, folder in which you want to save your gameplays. So as soon as you start recording the data, the footage will be saved to the folder which you choose from here. Now. This is uh, a major part of recording gameplay, it, the write speed of your HDD, your hard disk. Uh, so if you have a write speed of anywhere between 70 to 80, then that's decent. You'd be able to do some decent recording, whereas if it's anywhere below 70, you will run into some issues. Um, and if it's eight, over 80, then you don't need to worry much. Uh, so that's where basically where you want to, uh, you want to benchmark your HDD, your hard disk, and just see if your write speed is good enough for you to continue on further and record some gameplay. The next tab is uh, just the shortcut keys, the the hot keys for recording, and just different, uh, you, can, you can choose whatever you like. Uh, this is the default setting, and I've stuck to it, and it hasn't been bad. So uh, yeah, you can pretty much change what you want here. Now this is probably the main bit of the video. So um, as you can see I've set the default settings although I've changed some stuff here. The first thing that you want to get is uh, a codec called the Lagerith Lossless Codec. Now when you first get the software this will not be included. You'd have to download it separately. The link will be in the description as always. Um, it's completely free. Uh, you can just navigate your way through to the download uh, from here. So you need to click that, That's uh, it's an amazing codec, it makes sure data isn't lost and you end up with a really efficient way of recording gameplay. Now you can change this depending on uh, well use of the footage. If you are going to post it on YouTube then 30 frames should be enough because it wouldn't make much, uh, much difference if you uh, put it to 60 frames unless you're doing any slow-mo related stuff because YouTube displays all their videos at 30 frames per second. Now in terms of output you want to stick to file output because direct show is mainly for um, streaming etc. Uh, you can do it although mm, if you want to record gameplay this would be the ideal uh, output type. Now the, the file format I stick to AVI because raw cap is basically you have the raw data um, nothing uh, done to it and you just end up getting a really large file with all your footage and unless you have loads of external hard disks and stuff to store your footage I recommend sticking to AVI because that does the job perfectly and um, there's literally nothing to mess around with here you can set the margins, uh, we don't see the purpose in doing that now the scaling, so this is where you really will get either scaled down or scaled up depending on your settings, so if you're uh, if your screen resolution is 1920 by 1080 and so is the re resolution of the video recording at 100%. Uh, although if you do have some uh, issues with the specs of your system, if you think your system isn't exactly suitable for recording gameplay efficiently, you might want to set the size to uh, probably lower to 720p is what I usually go for. 
and it should do just fine considering not many people watched all the videos at 1080p. Now the audio, um, this is where you, well, you can't exactly figure out what you need to do, and but it's, not, it's not exactly straightforward is what I'm trying to say. So you'd have, uh, like me, you have one uh, stream for your microphone, so this makes sure that you're recording everything that's coming through your microphone, and the other number makes sure that you're recording everything that's going on in the system itself. So all the system sounds, the game sound, audio, everything will be recorded through the second uh, number. So you might need to add more numbers because um, by default it only comes at number one and you can pretty much change that whenever you want. Uh, so that's that. The screenshot tab I don't really think we need to be looking at or I'm pretty sure you'd be able to uh, look at that yourself and figure out what's, what's best for you. And that's the bit here that you want to change is processing threads. To, so to make sure that you're recording the software makes um, absolute best of your system specs. So if you have one of the higher ends or mid mid ends, uh, mid -end? mid -end, uh, CPUs, for example, I have the i5 uh, and therefore I have four cores. If you have the i7, you have eight cores and um, it pretty much displays the maximum amount of cores that you can use and you can change it according to your preference. I mean, having a higher core means that it would use more of your cores and therefore be more efficient uh, when it comes down to performance. Now global, there isn't much need to change here. It's really personal preference as I said before. Uh, yeah, everything's, everything here is pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, that's it guys. Uh, after this, after the, doing this, you should pretty much get the best you can from your system in terms of recording gameplay. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial. I know it isn't exactly um, fully straightforward, if not it's also pretty fast the way I talk. Uh, I'm trying to reduce the size of this video as much as I can. Uh, for really, yeah, 7 minutes, uh, that's fine. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you did like this video then please do like the video and subscribe and comment below telling me if if it, was, if it was effective or if you think there's another way to improve the frame rates that you get from your games. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this. If you did, I'll see you guys in the next video.